Well, during the second training in our GIS for Teachers course, I got this question um, saying that, yeah, it's it's fun and it's, it's excellent to see how many um, addresses are within one building so that we can see if it's a multi-store building or multi-apartment building. Um, but can we do something similar for the functions as well? And I was thinking about that, but that comes with some difficulties. But um, yeah, we, we can manage that as well. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a function mix, a function mix map. And let's have a look at how we do that. Um, what we're aiming for is that we, on a building level, so on the uh, bond level, um, we are able to see how many functions are uh, defined in that building um, and which functions they are, of course. Um, all we need is in the data already in the uh, in the bug. And as you notice, by the way, um, I'm mixing and matching Dutch terms with trying to do everything in English. So that that will become quite um, weird probably during this video. But let's get started. So our end result should be something like we want to have a data set with all the buildings, pandem, and in that data set, we only need the specific functions that are defined in the Bach. And the functions that are defined are not in on building level, but they are on address level. So we need to combine the address data with the uh, PAND data. So let's have a look at how that is supposed to work out. Uh, for example, if we look at this uh, building here, uh, you will probably see some things that are strange already. So what is strange is that the building here has different statuses and the statuses are defined here. For example, permit is uh, already given out, um, but they also have an end date for their validity. So uh, let's make a selection of all the buildings that are now in the state where they are in use and there is no date here. So that would be, in this case, probably the bottom one in use, and it has no uh, end date yet. So let's make that selection. The selection is based on the fields and values. So in this case, uh, the end date uh, should be empty. And there's another function, and that says that the status should be in use. And this needs that operator here. And that should do it. Let's have a look. So now we have a nice selection. I'll switch off the uh, addresses. Uh, now we have a nice selection of all the buildings that are currently in use and have no end date. Let's export these ones. We're going to export the selected features. Build a new geo package from that, and I'll just put it on my desktop and I call it uh, something like uh, Funxy Mix. And as a layer name, this one is just about building, so I'll call this one Pond. I'm only saving the selected features, and uh, fields that I'd like to export are well, I could switch them all off more or less, um, and I'll probably need an identifier. I'll need the formal identification. Um, I don't need these ones. Bowyer is probably interest, but that's about it. Yep, that should do it. So now we have a new data set and it's supposed to be just one building now here, uh, built in 2015, one identification, etc. So that's a better basis to work with. Now have a look at the addresses. With these addresses, um, as I look at these addresses, you'll probably find that there's again, a lot of different value options here. Um, but in this case, you can see that this is a other function. Do we have something else? Yes, for example, here, meeting function, it's a different one. This is for living. And there's probably some shops here as well. Yep, 
Pinkle. So there you have the different um, functions for all the, ad the addresses we have here. So how to combine these functions? What we're looking for, and let's go back again to this one because that makes it pretty clear. What we're looking for are the different options within one building. So in this case, let me select the ones that are within this building, just roughly. And it looks like there are four points, but as you can see here, there are 18 features. Um, 18 features are selected already. Let's have a look at these features. I'll just show the selected features and you'll see these 18 are all addresses that are within our uh, Delft station. Here you see that there are different functions on the different addresses. So we need to combine those and get them together within one building. So the first thing we do is we can uh, organize them, for example, um, by doing a spatial join. So we can join them by location. The other thing we could do, but might be interesting as well, is we could use an ID for that as well. Here you see the uh, ID for the building. And as you can see, it's all the same number ends in 4152. If I select this one, sorry, identify this one, 4152. So our identification is interesting to use. So we could use that as well. Now in this case, I'm just going to make a, a, a join, an attribute table join, uh, because that is the easiest and probably gives the best result as well. Although, of course, theoretically, the results shouldn't differ. So what we're going to use is a, a join, and we're going to use join attributes by field value. Oops. So we have our function mix, um, the building data set, and the table field will be the uh, address field. Um, sorry, the input layer will be the address. And here we're going to use the identification, which is in our second layer, is the um, pont ID. That's the one. So which fields do we want to copy? Well, actually, I'm only interested in one field. I'm only interested in this case in our um, gebruiksdoel function. So that is the main field I'm using. Uh, now, what kind of a join did we make? We have a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many uh, join field. The problem with a one-to-one, -one, of course, is that you'll just take the first matching feature. So in our example, where we have 18 different addresses within one building, um, it's just joining one. So we will need a one-to-many join first. And later, we're going to dissolve the results for that as well. So what can we do else? A joint prefix, nope, let's not go there. Uh, we'll make a temporary layer from this. That sounds good. And we're opening it. Yeah, this, this should do it. So before I click on run, I first think of the kind of result that I'm expecting. And the result that I'm expecting is that we'll have a building data set. So the geometry of the building is there and it is joined to the function of the address. Yeah, that should do it. Okay, so let's go. Well, 23,000 features were successfully matched, 11,000 were could not be matched. Um, now, of course, we have to check why fields could not be matched, but there are some very good explanations for that. As you can see here, there are a few addresses here that have no building anymore and or no building yet excuse me uh, they have no building yet and on the other hand of course there are buildings that have no address so in two ways this could be 
still a good result, uh, although 11,000 objects could not be matched. So what do we have? We have a joint layer here now. Let's have a look at this. What happens if I click on the joint layer? You'll see that I have 18 joint layers. One has an office function, and the second one also an office function, the third one is a shop, the fourth one also a shop, etc. So there we go, we have all the different functions now in our uh, data set. But they're now all overlapping polygons, of course, because this polygon is drawn 18 times. Uh, so now we have to dissolve that as well. So let's have a look at the dissolve. Um, if I look at the uh, dissolve function, as you can see, I could use the joint layer as an input and I could use a dissolve field, for example, the uh, identification, because it should be the same uh, for all overlapping buildings. But the only thing I can make is one dissolved data set. And that does not give me the opportunity to, uh, for example, use all the values in separate fields. So I'm looking for something else. And as you might notice, if I start typing dissolve, you already get something like an aggregate here. Now the aggre aggregate function, that might be interesting because you can group together different results. So in this case, we're going to use a the joint layer again. We're going to group it by the identification. And then we have a look at the different um, options. So for the fit, that should be the same. Uh, so we could use the uh, first value here, uh, first value. Identification, yep, should be the first value, should be the same for all the different uh, values. The year of construction, Bauer, that should also be the same because it is one building. So we could use first value here as well. Um, so in this case of 18 values, they should all be 2015. And now here we come to some interesting thing. The function, if we concatenate that, uh, we'll get all the different values uh, separated by commas. Now that might be an interesting one. And we're going to make a temporary layer again. Yep, sure, go ahead. So now it's aggregating. Uh, that means that this data set will have a lot less um, rows than the formal one. Because, for example, the train station, instead of 18 different rows, 18 different objects, it will just be one object. So I'll pause the recording here. And we'll go back when this is done. All right, as you can see, it took me uh, 51 uh, seconds uh, to cancel this one because I thought that I made a very uh, understandable but still silly mistake. So let's get back to the parameters. The mistake I made is that if we have a building like we have one in Delft with over 500 uh, apartments in it, uh, we'll have 500 times voning function as our function. So we don't want to concatenate everything, we just want to concatenate the unique values. That might give a much better result. So let's run it again, but now with concatenate unique values. And let's pause it again. Right, finished. As you can see, it. Uh, it took a while. It depends very much, of course, on the uh, speed of your computer. Uh, but we seem to have a result. So let's have a look at it. I'm going to identify this building again. And now, as you can see, we have office, shopping and other functions. Um, so that should do it. Let's have a look at something else just to see. This one has uh, living, shopping and others. Yeah, it sounds about right for the different buildings, probably here. Office, living, other. So does every building have an other function as well? Probably not. Nope, this one has shopping and living. Uh, so it's just a shop, but there's a second building next to it. 
with or on the same place with shopping and office so yep that's about it that should do it the church just has a meeting function so what do we have now we have a data set where if you have a look at the uh, attribute table you'll see the different functions concatenated uh, separated by commas by the way if you see a uh, space after a comma that means that it is not concatenated but that it has originally more than one function so it is not that it just adds random commas some buildings already have double functions so we could work with it but it might be easier to make the table a little bit more well user friendly for example we could have a look at the different functions and make every function into one field uh, where we can say yes or no if it is if it has that function um, the kind of functions that we have are very nicely shown in a page by the municipality of Amsterdam called Stelselpedia, uh, where all the different functions in this case are, um, are defined. So let's have a look if we can make our uh, table um, in such a way that we can make 11 fields next to each other and per building we could say if this function is available or not. So we're going to make a new um, we're going to make a new field here. We use the uh, field calculator for that. And for example, we're going to first make a field that has the name. Um, well, let's start at the beginning. Here you can see one functions as the first. So we could make a field called one. And for now, I'm going to use a number and just if um, Vonen is included in the function list, then I'll just put a one in here. So we're going to use a case when. As you can see, I've been trying this a bit and the condition in this case will be um, that our um, verblijfsobject gebruiksdoel is includes something like woon so in this case um, if a building has um, a verblijfsobject uh, gebruiksdoel which includes this that means that we'll get a result and the result in this case will be for example just one Let's have a look what happens if we uh, okay this. As you can see now, the bone function is in a lot of places. There's bone function. In this case, there's also here the bone function. But in this case, for example, where there's a null value, it has just the shopping. We could do something similar for all the other 10 functions. So let's do that. And I just did the same thing, uh, but you don't need to see all that. Right, done. So I've copied this, took me a few minutes, and I've got all different um, functions now here. Now there's one more thing to do, and that is to make a sum of all the different uh, functions. All right, so let's make this uh, function field with the number of functions in it. Um, I'll use the field calculator again. I'll call this field functions and the only thing is I have to do this a bit ugly um, in this case with an array sum and then again array from all the different values and that is because I have a lot of null values here which if you just add them together um, that doesn't work so uh, in this case now it works and that should do the trick So let's have a look. Um, so we have, this is a lot of empty values here, but there's a lot of things with single values here. And if we select this by the number of functions, 
we also have here six functions, which is probably correct. Yes, we have six different functions. here. So now we have all the separate functions and we have them combined. And we could use this to make a, a nice map in uh, of the uh, number of functions, for example, here. So we could do something like a um, simple um, graduated map using the um, functions field as input, um, of course, using a different color than red, and just use three different settings. For example, uh, everything with no function, with one function or multifunctional, um, that should do it. So you probably see now that in the city center, there's a lot of multifunctional buildings. But if you look into one of the more living areas, you'll see a lot of monofunctional buildings and the shopping area is multifunctional again. So there you have it. You could make something else out of this as well, of course, uh, but this will give you good insight in the functionality matrix that we have in our city. So let's come back to our original data. We had um, building information, PONT data set, and we had some function information from the addresses. And it is combined into a data set that if you look at the attribute table, will show you, um, let's have a look at the uh, functions again, will show you for the different categories of functions, if that function is available in that specific building and also how many functions are available in that specific building. So you have everything together into one data set and that is reusable for other purposes as well.